Okay, so this is one of the books that I'm reading right now by Patricia Hill Collins. I have two more books to get through and then I will decide which book I'm going to roll out for the book club. But I want to read a passage from this book that was released in 2005. So just a trigger warning, I'm going to try to read through this. This is for educational purposes only, and hopefully reading this will not get me a community violation. Okay. African-American politics have been profoundly influenced by gender ideology that ranks race and gender in this fashion. Lynching and grape have been given, have not been given equal weight. And as a result, social issues seen as affecting black men, in this case, lynching have taken precedence over those that seemingly affect only black women, grape. Within this logic, lynching, police brutality, and similar expressions of state-sanctioned violence visited upon African-American men operate as, a cons as consensus issues within African-American politics. Lynching was not a random act. Instead, it occurred in public, was sanctioned by, was sanctioned by government officials, and often served as a unifying event for entire communities. In contrast, the sexual violence visited upon African-American women has historically carried no public name, garnered no significant public censure, and has been seen as a cross-cutting gender issue that diverts Black politics from its real job of fighting racism. Black women were graped, yet their pain and suffering remained largely invisible, whereas lynching, racism, was public spectacle. Grape sexism signaled private humiliation. Black male leaders were not unaware of the significance of institutionalized grape. Rather, their political solution of installing black male patriarchy in which black men would protect their women from sexual assault inadvertently supported ideas about women's body sexuality as men's property. Stated differently, Black women suffering under racism would be eliminated by encouraging versions of Black masculinity whereby Black men had the same power that, my, that white men long enjoyed. I think women, I think Black women know and understand that our suffering is supposed to be silent. And the way assault is handled in the Black community speaks to that. We're supposed to suffer in silence so that the men don't get put away. But in this way, it's oppressive to women and girls and smaller men and boys at the hands of a darker oppressor.